the cooperation issue is uh, very important because the number of uh, complex disputes is uh, growing and uh, courts, administrative authorities and other bodies, uh, as well as interest, interested parties are uh, burdened uh, with these uh, cases. Uh, as a response, uh, the complexity of private international law rules is uh, growing and uh, in uh, family related uh, matters, actually the parties uh, often lack uh, knowledge and they lack uh, resources to undertake uh, judicial actions uh, abroad. Uh, if they rely on their own forces and means to engage uh, legal representatives, um, or bring an action in a foreign uh, country, uh, they actually realize that it is beyond their uh, capacities. Uh, it is uh, true uh, for vast majority of uh, people. Hence, uh, the effectiveness of legal protection that is afforded by private international law rules uh, would come to a question mark. Uh, cooperation mechanism is here to minimize uh, these unwanted effects and maximizes uh, the benefits of private international law rules. Uh, with central authorities, parties would ideally uh, be enabled with a smooth, cheap, efficient and timely uh, service of justice in international family uh, dispute. Proper functioning of central uh, authority system and judicial cooperation system uh, would actually reduce uh, time delays in cross-border proceedings and uh, in the end it would um, actually reflect uh, the well-being of uh, the child. Uh, so rules on judicial and administrative cooperation are actually perceived as logistical support to actors of uh, cross-border uh, um, uh, parental responsibility proceedings. The uh, uh, RECAST regulation uh, acknowledges three levels of uh, cooperation. It is the administrative uh, or central authority cooperation, judicial cooperation, and the mixed one. Uh, if we first uh, focus on the central authority, uh, we all know it is undisputedly the uh, future of uh, modern private international law regulations and conventions. It is not a novelty of our time. It has been first introduced by United Nations uh, uh, at 56 uh, Maintenance uh, Recovery Convention. It has been overtaken by the Hague uh, Conference of Private International Law and uh, uh, later on uh, by the European Union, which has basically built its system on the 1996 uh, Hague uh, Convention uh, uh, rules. Over the time, this is became very complex. Central authorities gained a number of general and uh, specific uh, functions and the uh, uh, number of these provisions and their content is uh, uh, growing uh, of, with each new instrument that has been enacted. So it uh, has been confirmed also by the recast uh, Brussels uh, uh, Tutor Regulation because uh, it uh, actually stems to introduce severe changes uh, of uh, functions and procedures uh, in relation to central authority. And uh, uh, we may even uh, see these provisions uh, being essential to effectively support uh, parents and children involved in um, uh, family procedures. Uh, this slide can indicate uh, the importance of uh, cooperation rules uh, in the Brussels II regime because the first Brussels uh, uh, regulation act actually had no rules on uh, cooperation. Second, uh, had uh, uh, Brussels IIa uh, some rules on cooperation and uh, now we have uh, these uh, rules uh, enacted through different uh, chapters. Some of them we have already dealt with, uh, particularly the international child abduction, and we will deal with uh, those uh, rules uh, today again later on. There is a special chapter five devoted to uh, uh, cooperation by central authorities, and most of the general provisions of chapter six again relate to uh, central authorities. So uh, the question is, is uh, this extensive uh, new regulation really justified? I have listed uh, some of the main objections uh, that um, uh, arose in the application of the Brussels 2A. 
it, uh, it was often emphasized that cooperation provisions were not sufficiently uh, specific. And the details and specific details are very important for the applicants uh, as um, it, they create uh, certainty and the uh, applicants know what kind of a help uh, they may expect. Uh, expect. Uh, uh, it is also notable that cooperation provisions were different to the provisions of the Hague Convention and the maintenance uh, regulation. Um, it has often been emphasized that uh, there are serious time delays in handling the request uh, and uh, they are actually jeopardizing the entire system. Uh, it was very uh, problematic uh, uh, to deal with uh, different uh, languages, uh, official languages uh, of the European Union, as there were no specific uh, provisions on language and uh, translation requirements. Uh, another very significant objection related to problematic uh, cooperation with um, child welfare authorities, and uh, it has uh, uh, mirrored through two different channels. So the problem related to uh, intrastate uh, cooperation, it means that the central authority had to, to cooperate with local authorities that would actually deliver certain information that were required uh, by the foreign central authority. And uh, the, uh, the other problematic uh, aspect of this cooperation uh, is international as uh, Sometimes uh, local child welfare authorities actually directly contacted central authorities of uh, some other member states and uh, they uh, actually uh, seek for information uh, directly and not through their own local uh, central uh, authority. Uh, I think the main uh, objection uh, related to insufficient uh, resources um, uh, to handle the number of cases. Uh, so these resources that were lacking were human, uh, technical and uh, financial uh, resources and actually cooperation uh, uh, between central authorities and uh, 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 another uh, stakeholders was often hindered by the disparity of resources that were available uh, to them. Uh, and uh, the, the last aspect I have identified is lack of support and the training to central authorities uh, staff as uh, very often uh, they, uh, the, the guides uh, or implementing uh, legislation were, were not adequate uh, and uh, um, they were not uh, sufficiently trained to deal with the sophisticated issues uh, they uh, were uh, facing with. Uh, so, if we now turn on to the uh, Brussels to terror regulation provisions, I would uh, now more specifically deal with uh, this uh, chapter 5 that uh, relates uh, exclusively to central authorities. Uh, so, the, the provision on designation of central authorities remained uh, rather uh, similar to the provisions that uh, were already in the Brussels to A regulation. And the um, uh, uh, provision says that each member state uh, should uh, designate one or more central authorities with a clear geographical and functional jurisdiction. Most member states uh, really did designate only one central authority, but basically these are very different national authorities that uh, have been nominated and uh, Member states uh, actually designated more authorities with functional jurisdiction, for example, uh, uh, Slovakia. Another very uh, important aspect uh, of uh, designation is uh, uh, still uh, lacking uh, within the uh, LICAST uh, regulation. Uh, it actually retained uh, mainly in the form of soft law, it uh, was uh, turned to uh, the recital, um, although it was uh, one of the provisions of the proposal of the regulation, so there is still no obligation to designate same authority to parallel instruments, and uh, there is no obligation to provide adequate resources uh, for central authorities. So now uh, each member state can only uh, refer to recital 72, and uh, uh, try to uh, uh, find the balance uh, with uh, other central uh, authorities nominated or designated for 1980 and 1996 convention. Um, I uh, actually 
feel there's a question mark why not trying to align this or uh, promote compatibility of designation also to the uh, central authority that uh, deals with the requests uh, uh, within the maintenance regulation. And uh, the other aspect uh, that is now missing in the uh, recast uh, relates to resources. Uh, uh, so each member state should ensure that central authorities have adequate financial and human resources uh, to enable them to carry out the tasks assigned uh, to them under the regulation. So we uh, have to see if this polite request uh, would be sufficient uh, for the governments of the member state uh, to assure proper uh, resources and uh, attribute uh, support to um, uh, central authorities. When we um, look at the general tasks of central authorities, uh, the uh, basic provision relating to the communicating information on national laws and procedure uh, and now services that are available is uh, basically similar, very similar to the previous provision, but a valuable add is paragraph two, uh, which um, actually empowers uh, the central authorities to, to uh, require uh, full cooperation uh, of the other national competent authorities. Now the competent national authorities uh, are clearly within the scope of the regulation and, and they have a role in the application of uh, the uh, regulation. So the burden uh, is also on them, not only on the central authority. Uh, and uh, the other general tasks uh, relating to the usage of European Judicial Network mainly remained uh, untouched. Uh, very important innovation of uh, the regulation uh, is uh, the clarification uh, uh, and specification of circulation of requests uh, under Article 78 now. Uh, it is very clear who can initiate the cooperation. So the cooperation may be initiated at a request by a court or competent authority and certain requests may be initiated also by a holder of parental responsibility. And it is also now very clear how the uh, requests uh, would be uh, circulating uh, uh, through the central authority uh, system. Uh, it is uh, also novel uh, to clarify that uh, aid provided by the central authority is a right rather than an obligation, which has also previously been uh, clarified by the uh, Court of uh, Justice in its uh, case law. Um, uh, regarding the specific tasks uh, that uh, the central authority uh, would deal with, uh, now the uh, regulation enumerates all of the specific functions in Article 79, and uh, then some of these specific functions are in a more detailed uh, uh, referred to in Articles 80, 81, and 82. Uh, what is uh, completely uh, uh, new is uh, providing assistance in, uh, in discovering the whereabouts of uh, the child. Um, a central authority should collect and exchange information that are relevant in procedures and matters of parental responsibility, which is in more detail dealt with Article 80. Uh, innovation is also that the central authority would provide information on uh, uh, legal aid. Uh, uh, central authority should facilitate communication uh, between the courts uh, in the application of um, um, Article 81 and uh, uh, later on Articles uh, 12, 13, 15, and 20 um, uh, provide uh, uh, assistance uh, in placement of the child and uh, facilitate agreement uh, between holders of parental responsibility through mediation and other means of alternative dispute uh, resolution, which is the task that is actually not linked to any other provision of the regulation, but is very important uh, uh, feature that can replace uh, 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 classical procedures and that could set off certain burden of uh, the other authorities if uh, properly uh, applied. Uh, 
if we look more detail to some of these uh, provisions, uh, so a very valuable uh, provision uh, relates to collecting and exchanging information in parental responsibility procedures, because uh, there's now an innovation that uh, clearly identifies that information uh, relates not only uh, to the child, uh, that is uh, subject to procedure, but also a central authority now can collect information that relate to the parent, relative, or uh, any other person uh, who may be suitable to care uh, for the child. Uh, there's also a very valuable innovation that relates to information about child that is exposed to serious uh, danger. Uh, since uh, the court and competent authority uh, that uh, has taken such measure shall inform the, the courts of competent authority of the other member state uh, uh, on the danger uh, the child is uh, facing. Uh, here, uh, I actually see uh, uh, potential uh, cooperation uh, in respect of the application of the um, regulation uh, uh, 606 uh, that relates to uh, protection, protection measure. Uh, a very valuable ad is also the one that clarifies the language uh, requirements and the uh, time limits for response that is now set to, to maximum three months from the receipt of um, uh, request. Uh, what I uh, still don't see is uh, a corresponding provision that uh, uh, can be found in the maintenance regulation. Uh, what happens if the requested central authority is not able to provide the information? Uh, uh, would it uh, have to inform immediately uh, on also on the grounds uh, for this uh, impossibility? Uh, and uh, what happens if uh, the supporting documents are not complete? Is there a certain deadline for that? Or, since there are many, many specific uh, provisions uh, in the maintenance uh, regulation. Um, then another uh, 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 provision that uh, has been uh, updated is also the one that relates to placement uh, of the child. It is now clarified that uh, the placement is subject to obtaining the consent of other member state authority first, although consent is not needed in certain uh, uh, situations which are here uh, nominated. And uh, again, the, the cooperation language requirements are very much clarified as well as uh, uh, time limits. Uh, there's something very uh, new uh, in the, this provision, also in some other provision that relate uh, to central authorities. It is that recast encourages uh, closer co cooperation and uh, simplified uh, procedures among um, uh, central authorities and other authorities of uh, different member states in their mutual um, uh, relations. And uh, I would now just short, uh, shortly refer to the uh, chapter six uh, that applies equally to all requests under chapter three, four, and five. Uh, although, as I already mentioned, it mainly relates to uh, the central authority uh, requests. Um, uh, it uh, clarifies that uh, the information that have been obtained uh, through the central authority may be used only for the purpose of uh, the uh, regulation and uh, uh, central authority uh, court or other competent authority uh, shall not disclose uh, or confirm information if health, safety or liberty of the child or some uh, other person uh, would be uh, jeopardized. Uh, I would now again refer to maintenance regulation uh, where Article 58 uh, contains very detailed uh, provisions on uh, and uh, another uh, time limits uh, for um, uh, confirmation of receipt of the application. Uh, also uh, uh, issues how to um, add some supporting documents that were needed uh, when the requested authority can reject the application and similar, they are uh, uh, not integrated in the recast uh, regulation. And um, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it, it still contains uh, provisions that relate to uh, uh, 
confidentiality of information in separate provision. Uh, it is Article 89, as I have previously mentioned. Uh, now we will skip to this part that relates to judicial cooperation. Uh, actually, judicial cooperation is uh, nowadays uh, inevitable in cross-border dispute uh, settlement. Uh, it comes with massive, massive intervention of international and supranational uh, actors within national judicial uh, systems. They are actually progressively eroding the state, state centrism, but each national state actually remains the master of the game in adjudication. So uh, each authority that uh, deals with certain uh, subject matter in national uh, procedures uh, and uh, national cases deals with cross-border cases equally. Uh, it uh, significantly changes administrat administration of uh, justice and places uniform application uh, to the for forefront. Uh, within the European Union, uh, we uh, realize that there are no hard powers uh, in the field of judicial policy, but the EU is actually adopting uh, soft leverages of influence that are based on socialization. Um, and uh, they do it through the uh, European Judicial uh, Network. Uh, we know that globally the HEC uh, Conference on Private International Law deals with direct judicial cooperation uh, uh, for a long time through the HEC International Judicial uh, Network. Uh, this judicial network actually became a, a sustainable uh, operational tool that ensure better uh, coordination beyond and besides private international law uh, harmonization. And uh, now skipping back to the new provisions uh, of the Brussels uh, uh, to uh, uh, recast. Uh, so we have a, a separate provision that deals with judicial cooperation. And it now clearly states that courts may cooperate and communicate directly with each other, and the courts may request information again directly from uh, each other. Um, uh, it is subject to procedural rights of the parties uh, to the proceedings, and uh, uh, they have to take care of the confidentiality of uh, information. I just uh, again put the question mark about uh, a more detailed protocol on this uh, communication uh, as we have witnessed that long time ago the HEC conference uh, provided one uh, for the judges uh, within the uh, network, uh, HEC uh, judicial uh, network. Uh, so the provision uh, on judicial cooperation more specifically advocates communication that uh, is uh, directed to achieving uh, full applicability of its provision relating to transfer of jurisdiction, provisional and protective measures in uh, urgency, uh, list pendants and dependent action, and the communication uh, that relate to uh, international child abduction, recognition and enforcement, and cooperation in uh, matters of uh, parental responsibility. 